Companies use process cost systems to apply costs to similar products that are mass produced in a continuous fashion. Manufacturers of cereal, paint, steel, oil, and soda would all use a process cost system. Once production begins, it continues until the product emerges. The processing is the same for the entire run. Each unit, in this instance a soda bottle, obtains the same amount of materials, labor, and overhead. All units produced are identical. Each bottle of soda is the same. In a job order cost system, companies accumulate costs by each job. Job order costing is used when different products with individual and unique features are produced each period. A process cost system produces a large volume of uniform or identical products. Companies track costs by department or manufacturing processes, rather than by individual jobs. Companies use process cost systems to apply cost to similar products that are mass produced in a continuous fashion, whereas a job order cost system assigns cost to specific jobs. Let's take a look at companies that use either a process or job order cost system. Keep in mind, what you are manufacturing will determine which system you will use to track costs. If you are manufacturing identical products that are mass produced, you will use a process cost system. If, however, you are producing different products with different production requirements, you will use a job order cost system. In this brief exercise, you have a list here of four different companies and you, you need to determine which costing system they would select. If the products are identical and mass produced, you will use a process cost system. If the product has individual and unique features, you will use a job order cost system. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. The flow of cost in these two systems is basically the same with one slight difference. In a job order cost system, companies accumulate costs by each job, whereas a process cost system track costs by each department or manufacturing process. And a separate work in process inventory account is maintained for each department or process. Let's discuss the similarities and differences between these two cost systems. Job order and process cost systems are similar in three ways. The first is the manufacturing cost elements. Both systems track direct materials, direct, lab direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. The second similarity is the accumulation of materials, labor, and overhead. Both systems debit raw materials inventory, factory labor, and manufacturing overhead. The third similarity is the flow of cost. As noted above, both systems accumulate all manufacturing cost using the same accounts. Both systems then assign these costs to the same accounts. Both systems will use work in process inventory, finished goods inventory, as well as the cost of goods sold. The method of assigning costs, however, will differ significantly. These four differences will be discussed in detail in the next slide. All right, let's discuss the four differences between a job order and a process cost system. The first one is the work in process accounts. A job order cost system uses only one work in process account, whereas a process cost system uses multiple work in process accounts. It will have a work in process account for each department. The second difference is the documents that are used to track cost. A job order cost system charges cost to individual jobs and summarizes them in a job cost sheet. A process cost system summarizes cost in a production cost report and it will prepare a production cost report for each department. The third difference is the point at which costs are totaled. A job order cost system totals cost when the job is completed, whereas a process cost system totals cost at the end of a period. And finally, the last difference is the unit cost calculations. In a job order cost system, 
The unit cost is the total cost per job divided by the units pro processed or produced. Whereas in a process cost system, the unit cost is the total manufacturing cost for the period divided by the equivalent units produced or processed during the period. I want to take a few minutes to discuss equivalent units. The basic idea in process costing is to total all the cost incurred in a department during the period and spread those costs uniformly to all the units that were processed in that department. Applying this simple idea involves complications. The difficulty is that a department typically has some partially completed units in its ending inventory. It doesn't seem reasonable to count these partially completed units as, an, as equivalent to a fully completed unit when counting the department's output or process units. These partially completed units are translated into an equivalent number of fully completed units. We'll discuss this concept in more detail later.